and you should keep it going for your next storyteller. Welcome, Peter Damani. I was four years old, <laughs> and I tasted pure, unadulterated joy. This was the Bronx in the early 80s. There was no cable. There were rabid ears. But these rabbit ears on our incredibly boxy television delivered to me that pure, unadulterated joy in the form of boom, 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 Wonder Woman. But not just any Wonder Woman, the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. That's right. The perfect flip. The bracelets that could deflect bullets. The lasso that made you tell the truth. The invisible plane. <laughs> I was ecstatic every time the show came on. I didn't understand a lot about it. She was a Greek goddess, but she was also fighting Hitler, but I didn't care. <laughs> I was happy. Gave. But how did this read with my very working class, very Catholic Bronx family? I don't know. My family, I have a brother and a sister, and a mother and a father, and the, and the gender roles are very set. And to use some late 70s, early 80s motifs, the women in my family, my mother and my sister, are Lonnie Anderson. The men in my family, my father and my brother, are Tom Selleck. <laughs> Little Peter was like Uncle Arthur. Paul went <laughs> on Bewitched, thank you. Uh, so. Yeah, so, so I, I knew even at four years old that I was, you know, I was a little bit on shaky ground with my undying love for Linda Carter. It got a little bit more intense around Christmas time when my parents and my siblings started asking me, Peter, what do you want for Christmas? I knew what I wanted. I wanted a Wonder Woman doll, an official in my mind, because it was probably not official, but an official in my mind, Linda Carter Wonder Woman doll from Woolworths. And I knew that it would maybe be weird for me to ask for Wonder Woman. So I told my parents, I'll get back to you. <laughs> and, you know, growing up with my brother, who was 10 years older than I was, he played with G.I. Joes. He, he, you know, he, did, he did a lot of boy things. And I realized, wow, action figures. I don't want a doll. I want an action figure. So what I did was I devised a plan, a smoke screen. I pretended that I cared about superheroes. You know, Batman, Superman, etc. The Man of Steel, he would be my beard. <laughs> and Batman would be his assistant beard. And you know, because I like superheroes, whatever. So my parents, my siblings, they're they're pressing on, they're pressing on, what do you want for Christmas? What do you want for Christmas? So I eventually gather up enough courage. Oh, I really like superheroes. So, you know, I want a Superman doll, a Wonder Woman doll, and a Batman doll. <laughs> Noted. No reaction. I'm terrified. But, you know, they go away, you know, whatever. The, you know, the stakes are very high. Even at a very young age, I, I kind of knew I was on shaky ground. This wasn't a you'll shoot your eye out. This is we have to do something about this little whatever this is. Any case, I busy myself as Christmas comes. As Christmas approaches, uh, making you know presents for my family out of construction paper and pasta dyed dyed gold and, and you know popsicle sticks and what have you. And on Christmas morning, we have this little ritual in my family where uh, the the children would violently shake the adults awake as early as possible so we could open up presents. And we did that, and we ended up in the living room where under the Christmas tree Santa Claus had brought many, many baubles and reds and greens and yellows and blues and what have you. I become a whirlwind, almost like Diana turning into Wonder Woman, spinning around, going through presents like crazy. I take one present, rip it apart. It's Superman, he has a cape. Nice. I take another present, rip it open, paper flying, bows, ribbons. It's Batman, he has a little, you know, a cowl, a mask, whatever, you can take it off, whatever. I, I get through other presents, family from Puerto Rico, family from Italy, what have you. 
not really interested in the socks that I'm getting. But finally, <laughs> I see under the tree this giant box. And I go right for it after everything is dispatched. And it, what is it? It's Wonder Woman. It's an official, in my mind, because it probably wasn't, official <laughs> Linda Carter Wonder Woman doll. She had this incredible red gown on and these weird Barbie shoes. And I, after I tore open the package and tore open the box, I tore off her outfit. And she had on the Golden Eagle Boussier. And she was fighting for your rights in her satin tights. <laughs> and that weird Linda Carter waist that I still don't understand that goes <laughs> <laughs> And this was before all the gender studies and the queer theory and everything, all the battles I would fight with my family about sexuality later. But that morning, 1981 Christmas in the Bronx, as I sat spinning my official, maybe, Linda Carter Wonder Woman doll with the shitty elastic band lasso that made you tell the truth, which you didn't need because you could see my truth of pure, unadulterated joy. <laughs>